Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Assault class in the Battlefield 4 beta and trying to determine if it's going to be as completely overpowering as it was in Battlefield 3. Now in BF3, the Assault class had access to some of the best guns in the game and arguably some of the best gadgets, the defibrillators and med pack. Those could keep you alive, they could keep your teammates alive, they were infinitely useful. So is the Battlefield 4 Assault class going to be as overpowering as it was in Battlefield 3 or has DICE toned it down a bit to try and make some of the other classes more worthwhile to play? Now in part to answer that question we do have to look at the other classes and how they've changed. Battlefield 4 has pretty much updated all the classes and made them much more usable giving them more gadgets to work with so they've already become much more attractive options to play which again tries to balance it out with the Assault class. Now if the Assault class is still maintains its kind of dominance over the best guns in the game and reviving in health, it could still be one of the best classes out there. Here you'll see I'm playing with the AK-12, which is one of the two assault rifles we're given in the Battlefield 4 beta, the SCAR-H being the other assault rifle. The AK-12 has a slow rate of fire, making it definitely not one of the highest damaging guns in the game, but its recoil is so easy to manage that it makes killing people at ranges very, very easy. It has been widely adopted as one of the favorite weapons in the Battlefield 4 beta due to its ease of use. Um, and I think we see it as a powerful weapon right now. However, there's so many more guns that are going to be coming out in the Battlefield for a final launch that I think the AK-12 is going to take a backseat to most of the new high rate of fire weapons that are coming out. As soon as people learn how to manage the recoil on the higher rate of fire weapons, and as soon as we get access to all the different attachments, we're going to be able to mitigate a lot of the recoil on the really high rate of fire weapons out there. And I think the AK-12 is going to again take a back seat to some of those guns because it has a 680 round per minute rate of fire. We already know that there's multiple assault rifles that are going to just absolutely obliterate that rate of fire. And there's also a lot of carbines out there that are also going to uh, outdo that rate of fire. So right now the AK-12 seems like a good weapon, but we really have to see what the full arsenal of the engineer weapons and uh, light machine guns and everything else that are going to offer. It's not to say that it's not going to be a good get gun in the final game, and the Assault class certainly has access to a lot of good weaponry. The the M320 grenade launcher, for example, has become a much more effective anti-armor weapon. You'll see here when I pop out of this anti-air tank, which is going to essentially be losing this battle to the main battle tank here. It's got 90% health. I pop out, switch to the grenade launcher. I'm somehow not killed by this tank. And you'll see I'm doing massive damage to this tank. The front damage shots only do 10% damage, but I've already got it disabled and then one final shot kills the tank. So the grenade launcher has become essentially an anti-armor weapon now. Uh, it's so much more useful than it was previously. We also have the M26 mass shotgun, which is, I would say, just as if not more effective than it was in Battlefield 3. Now, like the rest of the classes in the Battlefield 4 beta, we haven't really been able to see what they can do at their full potential. Again, this holds true for the Assault class because not only are we only getting access to two Assault Rifles, but we're not getting access to awesome attachments like the M320 flashbangs or the M320 smoke grenades. So we're going to get a lot of different M320 options, and this is really going to allow the Assault class to vary up its play style. But uh, regardless, I think it's going to be an incredibly effective and lethal option for all forms of anti-infantry combat. Now let's talk about one of the biggest changes to the Assault class from Battlefield 3 to Battlefield 4. The defibrillators, the tool, the gadget that allows us to bring our teammates back to life from the dead. In Battlefield 3 these things could be charged up instantly and you could zap your teammates back to life with 100% health and they could be back in the battle fighting again. You could revive them as much as you wanted. Uh, you didn't have any sort of cooldown on the defibs, and it was just incredibly good. You could bring your entire squad back to life uh, in a matter of seconds. Now, Battlefield 4 has changed up the defibrillator mechanics quite significantly. First of all, a instantaneous defib revive will only bring your teammates back with 20% health. This makes them very vulnerable to being one-shotted by pretty much any gun in the game. So you don't really want to revive them with 20% health unless they're in a safe situation and you can throw them a med pack. 
Now, if you charge up your defibrillators, you can effectively increase the amount of health that they have when they come back to life. And if you charge them long enough, you can give them full 100% health when you bring them back to life. This adds an extra level of skill to the medic and it allows you to basically anticipate how long it's going to take you to get to your teammates. If you're running out into the middle of the road to revive a friendly teammate, chances are you should be charging up your defibrillator paddles while you run at them rather than starting to charge them once you get to their body. This kind of anticipation can reward you by giving your teammates more health and it just adds that extra level of thought to the whole gameplay and revive mechanic. Revives have also been limited to a total of three in a short period of time, so no longer are the days of bringing back five guys, six guys, seven guys that have all been killed by C4 or grenade and just bringing them back to life and having them enter the battle as if nothing had happened. Now you can only get three and uh, it's going to be harder to get three anyway, but that's not even your entire squad anymore. So this again limits the medic in terms of their overall capabilities. Now one of the biggest changes made to the medic class in the Battlefield 4 beta and we might see this timing change for the Battlefield 4 final release is the time that you have to actually revive a dead teammate. In BF4 beta it's incredibly short, in fact if somebody dies uh, 30 feet, 40 feet away from you it might be too far for you to actually run over there and get the revive off before the revive timer is up. So this really reduces the effectiveness of the medic class out there and had me contemplating whether or not I even wanted to use defibrillators and was thinking about just running med pack and grenade launcher instead. Now the final big change to revive mechanics is the fact that you cannot keep somebody continuously revived. If you revive them once and they die before they can even get up and get back in the action, they will no longer be a revivable target. They have to have been alive for a significant period of time, uh, and then if they die again, you will have the option to revive them. But uh, if it's too quick of a death after you revive them, you cannot get them again, and this eliminates the whole spam reviving the same person and that same person dying over and over to uh, the same enemy. I know a lot of us in Battlefield 3 have gotten the same guy three, four, five times sometimes when he's just being revived by his teammate. And it's almost comical in Battlefield 3, but it's honestly a really bad game mechanic and it's nice to see that DICE has remedied this situation. Now I have to say I'm a huge fan of the reviving updates for the medic class. It really does reduce its effectiveness in keeping an entire team alive. Uh, very easily from Battlefield 3 and it makes me think about running alternative setups with the medic class like grenade launchers and health packs instead of defibrillators at all. So uh, I'm really looking forward to these changes and seeing how it balances out the assault class in the final release. Looking forward to the extra M320 uh, ammunition types and that sort of thing to really see what we can do with this class. But I have a feeling we're going to be seeing a lot of recon classes, a lot more engineers and support classes versus just tons of assault classes even on infantry only maps. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.